Hi, everybody, and welcome to another round of learning. All right, so we are going to talk about... Okay, hey, Ms. Baroskas, everybody. Here you go. Woohoo! We're going to start with dissolving equations. So if we have a molecular compound, remember these are two or more non-metals, um, all you're going to do is change from solid or gas to aqueous. So if it dissolves, remember something's dissolved is aqueous. So if it's covalent and it dissolves, all you have to do is change it from one thing to the other. You can show water riding on the arrow if you want to. So what that means is sometimes to show that it's dissolving, you actually write water as H2O. Okay. Ionic compounds are metal and a non-metal. Not all ionic compounds dissolve, so you've got to see the solubility rules given in class, and they're up above, too. Um, positive and negative ions are attracted to water and pull the ionic compound apart. So see, I'm going to zoom in on this little boy. Um, I've got water that's attracted to the negative end, right? And then this positive one, see how the negative end of water is attracted here. So the attraction's strong enough with all of these water molecules to pull them apart, okay? Again, this is like the third time we've seen the steps in dissolving. Solute, solute, bonds break. Remember, that would be, if I'm talking about NaCl, NaCl, bonds break, solute, solute. Um, solvent, solvent, bonds break. That means water, weak to water, right? So you're talking about um, H bonds. Solute, solvent, bonds form. That's my Na positive and my little water. Okay. So if you look at it, you'll see this quite regularly, right? So liquid solvent breaks apart. That's positive because you're breaking bonds. Solute crystal, that's positive, spreads out. And then they form bonds, get close together. That's negative. And believe it or not, most dissolving things um, is exothermic. Most dissolving is exo. All right. So when I look at aluminum chloride dissolving, notice how I have to balance it, right? AlCl3 is going to give me, notice I have three chlorines, three chlorines, and one aluminum. NaNO3, glad you know your ions now, one Na, and not three O's, but one NO3 negative. So notice the polyatomic ions stick together. All right. Representations of solution, you've got to be able to do this. They love their draw in the water things, okay? Hydration. So this is just a cheesy little vo vocabulary word. Like, look, show the hydration of it. Water particles surround and bond with the solute, okay? And there's going to be attractions. So heptane and pentane, note they're both, um, why did I put non? Uh, they're nonpolar, that's why. Nonpolar. And remember, nonpolar and nonpolar dissolve, so it has just dispersion forces. Dipole, dipole, acetone, and chloroform, right? They're both polar, right? And you can have stronger hydrogen bonding because they're both polar with my super special hydrogen bond, okay? And then you have ion dipole. So remember, this would be the weakest, and this would be the strongest of the intermolecular forces. And these are inter. Okay. And why is this the strongest? Big charge, full positive. And the other ones were smaller. Particle diagrams. Add water molecules. Okay. So we got a positive ion and a negative ion. Here we go. I'm going to throw some um, water molecules on here. Okay. Um, remember for water, the positive end is the ears and the negative end is the chin. So I'm going to draw some water molecules here. And here. And then I'll do some negatives over here. Whoops. And here. And that would be some water molecules that I put in there. Okay. Other representations of dissolving. Notice how this would be my solute. And this would be my solvent. Probably not water because we always show water as Mickey Mouse. All right, concentrated, lots of solute, dilute, lesser solute. And remember, realize these are relative to each other. Okay. 
concentrated, more solute than another in the same volume of solution, you'll see it, it'll be darker and it'll have a larger molarity. That's how you can tell them apart. Dilute, less solute, lighter in color, smaller molarity. So if I think about Kool-Aid, I have dark, which would be concentrated, and I would have light, which would be dilute. All right, separation of mixtures, we talked a little bit before, so solubility. All right, the mass of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent, typically in grams per liter. A high solubility means a relatively large mass of solute dissolves in a given amount of solvent. So as crazy as this sounds, I can dissolve like 150 grams of sugar in 100 grams of water if it's hot. Polar things dissolve in polar things because they're attracted to each other. Polar things dissolve many ionic things because the charges attract. Nonpolar things dissolve in nonpolar things because there's no repulsion and they mix. Liquids that dissolve in liquids are called miscible because they're infinitely dissolved in each other. Uh, I didn't say why they didn't. Um, so nonpolar won't dissolve. In polar because the polar won't break up. So if sugar is trying to dissolve in um, ethyl acetate, um, it might not dissolve because ethyl acetate is so attracted to itself that the water can't get out of there. All right. Dilutions. Whenever it says dilutions, you're going to bust out a little M1V1 equals M2V2. To do a dilution, do the math. Say add blank milliliters of concentrated solution to enough DH2O to form given milliliters of a final molarity and a volumetric flask with stirring. Now, what we did in our class was we could say add the last few milliliters with a eyedropper. So I have a stock solution of three molar. I need to have 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar. M1V1 equals M2V2. I need uh, my original one molar, or sorry, 0.1. And my volume is 25. Notice it doesn't matter as long as my liter things are the same on both sides. I tend to always put them in liters, but I didn't this time. Molarity of three, V2. And that V2 is going to come out in. Um, it's going to come out in uh, milliliters. So it's going to be 0.25 over 3. Shoot. And I am without a calculator. What is 0.25 divided by 3? 0.0833. I, I knew that one. That's 0.0833. That seems not right. 0.25 divided by 3. Oh, that's because I did my 0.25. It's not 0.25. It's just 25 divided by 3. So that is 8.3 three milliliters. Sorry about that. Beer's Law. See Beer Law, Beer's Law lab sheet, which is the lab we did. Spectroscopy determines the structure or concentration. There's what's called a photoelectric effect. Light hits the surface of a substance and kicks off an electron. How do we calculate the energy of a light? The energy of light comes in the energy of a photon. E equals H nu. E equals energy in joules. H is Planck's constant, and frequency is in hertz. Now, I want to make a point that this is in, this is not kilojoules. Okay. And frequency, that's good. Light has a variety of energies based on its wavelength. So let's take a look at them. The most energetic is gamma. The least energetic is radio. Now, I think you know Roy G. Biv. So this is red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Don't forget there's purple too. Roy G. Biv. Okay. So red is the longest. And that's the weakest. And violet is the shortest. And the strongest. So that means that we should know some things um, through this. Ultraviolet light is UV light. That's what gives you sunburn. That means it's high energy. 
it's more energetic, shorter wavelength than violet. Infrared, infrared is approximately heat. For us, it's basically heat. And heat, infrared goes by red, so it's longer than visible light, okay? It's shocking that microwaves are actually quite large. Note, as wavelength increases, frequency decreases and energy increases. Um, that is a mathematical calculation if you want to. So frequency equals C over lambda. So that's just a math thing, but it's really helpful to just know this. Wavelength and frequency are inversely related. Wavelength and energy are inversely related. So if we just ask that question, that's good to have in your working memory without having to go, uh, let me see this. If wavelength goes up, frequency goes down. Okay, um, so what does that do to energy? And E equals H uh, C. So that means if I, oops, I put H C, H nu. So that means if V goes down, E goes down. So energy and frequency are directly related. So I just want you to see all those things. Um, typically, a question will ask you to find the minimum energy because more energy will happen. So if I said, what's the minimum energy to knock over uh, gram of B? Psh, could you put more energy into that and still knock over the old lady? Yeah, it would, right? You can think of photons as particles too, which would smack the electrons off. Photon, boom, smacking off an electron, okay? Frequency equals C over lambda. Frequency is one over seconds or hertz. C is the speed of light, which is 2.99 E8 meters per second. Notice it's meters. Um, wavelength is in meters as well. Meters. And this is often given to us in nanometers. Grr, and a conversion is, is needed. So if it ever says nanometers, so if I have 300 nanometers, that means 300 E to the negative 9 meters. So the letter N means E negative 9, and then you're just done. Okay, so 350, 350 E negative 9, 700, 700 E negative 9. Breaking bonds. Given the energy to break a bond, we use that energy to determine the wavelength or frequency of the photon used to break it. Watch out for kilojoules. Watch out for moles. Remember, there's 6.02 E23 things in a mole. A 750 nanometer photon can break one eye to eye bond. Calculate the energy to break 2.5 moles of bonds. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is frequency oops, equals C over lambda. So I have lambda. Frequency equals 3.00E8 over lambda, uh-oh, 750, my uh-oh is E negative 9 meters. So, oh, 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 oh. So 3E8 divided by 750 E negative 9 is going to be, use your E's, you'll get the wrong answer, is going to give you the huge number of 4.00 E14. Now that is frequency, which is hertz, like a hertz donut. But the question looking for is energy. Energy equals H nu. So energy equals, oh man, Planck's constant, 6.626 E negative 34. Just like pi, you're going to have to memorize it or store it in your calculator. That's okay. 4E positive 14. So my 4E14 times 6.626E negative 34. And that is my energy is 2.65E negative 19 per photon. Uh, or whatever it is, per photon. Now I guess this one's per bond. Whoops. Per bond. But I want to know 2.5 moles. Oh, doggies. So so now I have 2.5. Remember, eye to eye would have one bond, just so you can see that. When I do my Lewis dot structures. So I have one bond, 2.5 moles of I2 times one mole over 6.02 E23 um, times, that's number of bonds in one mole, 2.65 E negative 19 uh, joules per.
per one bond. So notice how my bonds will cancel. Remember the diagonal things will cancel. Moles will cancel. Bonds will cancel. And then I'll get 2.5 times Avogadro's number, 6.02E23, times 2.65E19. And I get a big number, 3, whoops, 398825. Eight, remember, we like three sig figs. 3.98E12345. That's going to be joules. Okay. Or I could put it into kilojoules and have 398 or 399 kilojoules. Either answer is peachy. Okay. All right. Awfulness of man. You got to memorize this. Okay. So types of radiation used x ray. What's it do? Removes core electrons, it's in PES. How tightly are the electrons held? Measures their binding energy. Identity of an element. Okay, so an X-ray will tell you the identity of an element because it'll give you kind of the electron configuration. So this is the one, this is where you get, right? Remember you get 1s2, 2s2, and you count the peaks. Ultraviolet identifies, uh, gives you the identity of a molecule or an element. And it does UV visible spectroscopy. So that's like Beer's Law. Both of these are like Beer's. Okay. Infrared changes the vibration in the bonds. It identifies the type of bonds in the functional groups. Okay. So this will tell you, is it an, is it an alcohol? Which is an OH. Is it a ester? That's not an ester. Um, or a ketone or any of those other ones. So it just tells you the type of functional groups. And a microwave um, changes the rotation of the atoms and the location of hydrogen atoms within a molecule. And basically we know microwaves heat stuff up. Um, PES x-ray tells the electron configuration. That's right up there. That's what I was talking about before. And that's it. So how about that for a good day? Toodles.